Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Youssef. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Oil and Gas Holding Company, Noga Holding, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, held bilateral meetings with a number of representatives and heads of international companies in the oil and gas sector on the sidelines of their participation in the Sierra Week 2023. His Highness met with Betchel, APA Corporation, Chevron, Palantir, Technologies and Italian company Eni. The meetings were in line with the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa in securing the kingdom's energy needs in the future and achieving zero neutral goals set out during the COP26. His Highness stressed the importance of building strategic partnerships, bolstering cooperation and exchanging experiences to advance the oil and gas sector. He also highlighted the importance that Bahrain accords to the national energy strategy and its pivotal role in the growth and of the local sector and in contributing to building a sustainable future free of carbon emissions. His Highness highlighted Bahrain's lead achie leading achievements in developing the oil and gas sector and the importance of exploring more opportunities that ensure the continuity of the sector's development and growth through the application of the latest technologies and qualitative innovations that boost the efficiency of infrastructure and protect the environment. He also stressed the Kingdom's keenness to provide sustainable and safe energy supplies in line with the sustainable goals and the Kingdom's Economic Vision 2030. The BD of Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received GCC Secretary General Jassim Mohammed Libdawi and congratulated him on his appointment. In the presence of Defense Affairs Minister Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi and BDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagir Al Naimi, the BD of Commander-in-Chief wished Al Bdewi and all the staff of the GCC General Secretariat success in enhancing the Gulf system to achieve its desired goals. He stressed that according to the wise visions of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, military cooperation between the BDF and GCC armies is being strengthened based on the strong bonds among the GCC states and their unity of purpose and common destiny. The Speaker of the Representatives Council and the Chairman of the Shura Council affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain will receive more than 1,700 parliamentary figures from more than 143 countries to participate in the work of the 146th Assembly of the Inter-Parliamentary Union. More in this report. In preparation for hosting about 60 delegations of speakers of parliaments around the world to participate in the largest international parliamentary gathering hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Speaker of the Representatives Council and the Chairman of the Shura Council visited the site hosting the IPU meetings and praised the unremitting efforts that reflect the civilized and democratic development of the Kingdom. Great efforts were exerted by the National Organizing Committee for the meetings of the 146th Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union, which received great support and assistance from the Speaker and the Chairman to ensure the success of the meetings of the Union in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The General Secretariat of the Interparliamentary Union has developed an integrated program for the meetings and topics for discussion during the General Assembly, which will focus on promoting peaceful coexistence so that the Kingdom's hosting of these meetings will be a milestone in the history of local and international parliamentary work. On the occasion of Bahrain hosting the Interparliamentary Union meetings, the Representatives Council expressed thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for the royal patronage of the Legislative Authority and the unlimited support and guidance for all agencies and institutions to host the largest global parliamentary gathering. The Council welcomed all participants, wishing them to achieve the desired goals through active participation, distinguished attendance, and strengthening joint cooperation between parliamentarians. It's affirmed that Bahrain is a pioneering model for a society of tolerance and coexistence that guarantees and protects religious freedoms and the diversity it witnesses among the various components of society which form a humanitarian system and coexistence and tolerance that supports the achievement of noble goals in the Assembly's discussions on promoting peaceful coexistence and inclusive societies for all and combating intolerance. The Secretary General of the International Parliamentary Union, Martin Schongrang, affirmed that Bahrain hosting the 146th IPU Assembly will form the capital for all parliaments around the world. I'm here uh, on the occasion of the 146th Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union, which Bahrain is hosting uh, for the first time. It is an important event for us and for Bahrain too, because uh, we will be having some 1,700 participants 
here in Bahrain over the next several days to discuss a host of issues that are on the global agenda. So uh, basically for some six, seven days, Bahrain will be the capital of uh, parliaments from across the world here. And uh, I am sure that uh, many of the participants will learn a lot from the Bahraini uh, way of life, how this country is experiencing its own challenges and how uh, this country is uh, finding solutions to the issues uh, that plague all of us. And so I think that uh, it, this conference, this assembly, will offer the opportunity uh, to parliamentarians from across the world to exchange experiences on the global challenges that uh, we have today. The, the International Parliamentary Union works with other international parliaments following the approach Democracy for All in a comprehensive way. More in this report. A global organization whose vision is peace and democracy. It plays the role of the pivotal center for parliamentary dialogue worldwide under one methodology, a world in which parliamentarians work to achieve democracy for all in a comprehensive and collective manner. The Interparliamentary Union is a unique body consisting of several parliaments of countries from around the world. It consists of 178 parliamentarians. Women's participation in it exceed 26%, while youth constituted more than 29%. The IPU works for gender equality, youth empowerment, and sustainable development through political dialogue, cooperation, and parliamentary action. It also promotes women's access to parliament and participation in policy making, and supports women members of parliament. The IPU is the heart of democracy in the world because it represents people's voices through its dedication to working closely with international parliaments to be more effective and innovative in implementing plans and strategies. The most prominent of these plans is the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and strategies related to climate change and cybersecurity issues, which have become a preoccupation for the countries of the world, and the Union aims to provide solutions and support for people to rise to more sustainable and modern levels. Under the patronage of the Southern Governor, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa, Al Bayan School held a roundtable meeting in the presence of senior officials and ministers. The meeting comes within the Vocational Awareness Week organized by the school and included a number of accompanying events in order to share with students ways of vocational learning and build an integrated understanding of working life. The chairwoman of the Board of Trustees of the school, Dr. Sheikh Amay Latebi, expressed her happiness at the joining of ministers and officials in the roundtable, which gives a broader scope for students to obtain integrated information regarding the requirements of the labor market. The southern governor addressed the students and then he was honored on the occasion. Foreign Minister Dr. Abdul Latif Bar Rashid Zayani received the new GCC Secretary General Jassim Mohammed Libdewi and congratulated him on his appointment, wishing him success in his duties. Libdewi pledged to continue efforts to further the GCC march towards achieving Gulf leaders' aspirations to support cooperation between member states. The two sides discussed Gulf issues and ways of furthering economic and social cooperation to bolster the GCC status regionally and internationally. Libdewi expressed pride in the confidence of GCC leaders to appoint him as the Secretary General of the GCC his determination to exert more efforts to enhance joint Gulf cooperation towards achieving the GCC leader's aspirations of further integration and coordination. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Barrashid Zayani, participated in the meeting of the Arab League at the ministerial level, chaired by Egyptian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Chairman of the Arab League's 159th session, Samah Shikri, in the presence of Arab Foreign Ministers and Arab League Secretary General. The meeting discussed strengthening joint Arab action in various fields, coordinating Arab positions towards current regional and international challenges, maintaining security and stability in the region, and ways to strengthen friendship and cooperation with world countries to enhance Arab interests. The, meet the Minister also also participated in the meeting of the Quartet Arab Ministerial Committee concerned with following up on developments of the crisis with Iran and ways to address its interference in the internal affairs of Arab countries, chaired by Saudi Arabia. Dr. Zayani also participated in the ministerial meeting of the Arab Ministerial Committee concerned with following up on Turkish interference in the internal affairs of Arab countries, chaired by Egypt. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs met with the UAE Minister of State at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Khalifa Shahin al marar on the sidelines of the meeting of the Arab League at the ministerial level. The two sides reviewed the distinguished Bahrain-UAE relations in all fields and discussed topics of common interest and the means of further bolstering cooperation. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with Deputy Prime Minister, Foreign Minister and Expatriates of Jordan, Ayman al safadi They praised the continuous development of bilateral relations and ways to further enhance the cooperation in all fields in order to benefit both countries and their peoples. They also discussed regional developments and topics of common concern. The Ministry of Tourism and the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority took part in the International Tourism Exhibition in Berlin. The Ministry of BTEA are participating with a special pavilion alongside 12 participants from the most prominent Bahraini hotels and destination management companies. Tourism Minister Fatma Sarafi participated in a panel discussion entitled Ministers Roundtable, where she affirmed that the Bahraini participation in ITB Berlin comes within the framework of the Ministry's keenness to invest in major international tourism events to promote the tourism sector, attract more tourism tourists and visitors to the kingdom and continue achieving the ambitious goals of the tourism strategy 2022-2026. She highlighted the keenness to introduce the various tourist destinations in Bahrain and the activities of the upcoming tourism season including Formula One, the food festival and various attractive events. The Secretary General of the Higher Education Council and Deputy President of the Council's Board of Trustees, Sheikh Dr. Rana bint Isa Al Khalifa, participated in the opening of the International Conference on IT Innovations and Knowledge Discovery 2023, organized by IT College and Al Ahliya University, with the participation of a large number of scientists, academics, and IT experts from various world countries to share and exchange new ideas on knowledge discovery, artificial intelligence, security systems, and business intelligence. Sheikh Dr. Rana affirmed that learning about the latest findings on information technology, especially in the field of AI and cybersecurity, is an affirmation of the HEC's encouragement for research and development in universities to transform into a knowledge-based economy. Under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the annual Crown Prince Cup Golf Tournament concluded, held in Bahrain Golf Club, with the participation of club members. During the awards ceremony, the first Vice President of the Bahrain Golf Club, Lieutenant General Diab Naimi, on behalf of the club's President, Board members and players expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for patronizing the tournament, noting that it witnessed a large number of participants and strong competition. He also expressed thanks to the the board of directors for their organizational efforts and to the players congratulating the winners and wishing the others better luck in upcoming tournaments. Permanent representative of Bahrain to the UN in New York, Ambassador Jamal Faras al rawai delivered Bahrain's speech before the 5th United Nations Conference on the least developed countries themed from potential to prosperity. al rawai stressed Bahrain's constant keenness under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to consolidate partnership with the UN and support it in achieving sustainable development goals, especially in the least developed countries. He also noted the success of the joint efforts in supporting the least developed countries requires the international community to adhere to its commitment to provide development assistance. He expressed the Kingdom's belief in the importance of cooperation with the least developed countries as Bahrain initiated a number of joint cooperation projects in a number of countries. He affirmed that Bahrain was able to provide medical humanitarian assistance and establish health, educational and relief development projects in many countries affected by the repercussions of wars, conflicts and natural disasters. He further pointed out that the Kingdom continues to stimulate international humanitarian action by launching global initiatives and awards to serve of humanity. He added that the kingdom is keen to establish economic relations with various countries and transfer its pioneering experience and entrepreneurship to more than 48 countries in partnership with UNIDO. The second virtual international conference concluded in the Kingdom of Bahrain, which saw various sessions in many fields of uses of artificial intelligence and justice and judicial services. To speak more about this, we have with us on the phone Public Prosecutor Ibrahim Al Fadala. Hello, Mr. Al Fadala. Can you tell us about the outcomes of the conference as well as the main issues that were tackled throughout the two days? It has been concluded today the activities of the second virtual international conference on the uses of artificial intelligence and judicial and justice services. Among the outputs of that conference were several recommendations at the national and Gulf state level, most notably agreed on a unified definition of artificial intelligence and defined its scope in the field of justice. Preparing a national draft law regulating criminal liabilities 
resulting from dealing with artificial intelligence applications. Also, continuing to hold training programs between the parties of the criminal justice system. Moreover, encouraging national researchers in the field of determining criminal and civil liability for the users of artificial intelligence. In addition, establishing a committee or a team of specialists in artificial intelligence applications and technologies working under the patronage of the public prosecution. Finally, the establishment of a joint Gulf Center concerned with recording and archiving artificial intelligence inventions that are being tested on the ground, study them, and record any accident committed through them. Public Prosecutor Ibrahim Al-Fadala, thank you for joining us.